classes that conform to the observable object protocol can use the at published property wrapper on any properties they want to, meaning that when the values or the properties change, any SwiftUI view watching them will reinvoke their body property to make sure their laid out views stay in sync with the underlying model data. This works well a lot of the time, in fact, most of the time, but sometimes you want just a little bit more control and SwiftUI's solution for this is called object will change. Every class that conforms to observable object will automatically gain a property called object will change. This is a publisher, which means it does the same job as the at published property wrapper. It notifies any views that are relying on this data for their information for their view to reinvoke their body property when the data is changed. As the name implies, this publisher should be triggered immediately before we make a change. It's called object will change, not object has changed. And that allows SwiftUI to examine our UI fully before we make changes. So it's fully prepared for animation changes. To demonstrate this, we are going to build an observable object class that updates itself 10 times. And to do this, we'll use a new method called dispatchQ.main.AsyncAfter. This allows us to run an attached function, a closure, after a delay of our choosing, which in this case means we can say, do this work after one second, rather than do this work right now. In this test, we'll use async after inside a loop from one through 10. So it'll increment a number one, two, three, four, five, through to 10. And that'll be wrapped using at published. So change that to the sent as uh, the happening, so any of you watching will, will catch up. We'll say at main actor class delayed updater updater is an observable object. Inside there is at published var value is zero. And initializer for this, we'll say init for i in one through ten dispatch queue dot main dot async after deadline of dot now plus some seconds, double I seconds. So one second, two, three, four, up to 10. After that time is passed, we'll do self dot value plus equals one. So add one to value after one second, add another one after two seconds, another one after three, four, five, up to 10 seconds total. And to use that, we're going to make the object down here in content view using at state object. Private var updater is a delayed updater. And our body will say text value is updater dot value. Now I'll go ahead and run this code now so you can see it working. And it'll run by itself. I'm going to press the keyboard or anything than this. So count up one, two, three, four, and so on. So it's triggering the code, add one to the value after one second, after two, after three, and it'll do it in total 10 times. Now, if you remove the at published property wrapper, you'll see the UI no longer changes. It will stay value is zero always. Now behind the scenes, the async after code is still happening but it doesn't cause the UI to refresh anymore because no change notifications are being sent out. So if the UI isn't seeing it change. Now we can fix this by sending the change notifications ourselves by calling object will change. Uh, and then that we call send. I'm about to send, what do you want to do? And in this case, we can actually attach it as a, a property observer value. We can say, uh, will set object uh, will change dot send like that. And now the old behavior is back again. It'll update through one, two, three, and so forth. It'll add up again, again, again. So we have the same result as using app publish, except now we're triggering it by hand. Except now we have the opportunity to add extra functionality before we handle our changes or after you want to handle them, perhaps you want to um, 
write to a logger somewhere, for example, perhaps you wanna call in a method, perhaps you wanna clamp the integer inside uh, value to be a certain range, it's all under our control now.